To find the solution that you want to test, it should be simple. So what is simple? And this is an important, um, important way to work through what your idea is. Make a list of what your assumptions are about your project. Are your assumptions realistic? Um, and when I say your assumptions, I mean back with the QR codes again. The assumption is that students have test books. Um, that's a, a thing to check. Um, an assumption could be that students have access to the internet. Other assumptions are um, that there's content on Wiki that applies to these student studies. So it's important to make a list of all of the things that you assume will be true about your project or your idea um, so that you can check to see them. Are they true? Is there something you need to do um, to mitigate or get around that problem? So another thing is consider your skills and experience and your project team. How experienced are you? How much are you exper experimenting with? You should only be testing one thing at a time. So I saw a lot of ideas in the campaign that listed many different activities that would build towards growing awareness somewhere. Um, what I recommend is choosing just one of those ideas to start with. Um, it's easier to find out if the idea or the project that you're trying works and maybe what doesn't work about it if you're just testing one assumption and one solution at a time. As you get more experience with the first one that you try, you can add in additional things that you'd like to, to test with your projects. And the other thing there is consider your skills and experience and your project team. So like I said, we do have funding available to um, fund professional support from someone like a graphic designer or a video editor. Um, and I think that that's a really important thing to consider if you're creating some kind of visual material. If you're making a poster or a sticker or something else that's going out, you want to have something that is compelling, interesting, catches the eye. Um, if you don't get funding or don't want to um, look for a grant to do this, finding people in your community, friends who might be able to help with um, their design skills or their public speaking skills. This is another important thing to do when you're teaching, talking to a group of people. Does someone, someone really interesting and funny and um, good at doing presentations? That's the kind of person you would want to help you out on a project where you might be talking to a large group of people. So another aspect of simplicity is thinking about who will participate. Are you asking people to do too many things, complex things? It's a good idea to keep the tasks in your pilot project simple. Um, it can take a lot of work to explain what you want people to do if there's a very complex task, and better to give people simple things that they can do. Um, I think this applies both to your volunteer team that you're working with and to the people that you're trying to reach with your awareness idea. Giving them a very simple command of come to Wikipedia to find information about black women scientists and electrical engineers before the 1950s, or you know, very simple next steps that people should follow. Um, and finally, who will be affected by your pilot? You should get their buy-in first. Um, that would mean if you're doing something to change the wiki landing page where you're working, or that might, um, violate some policy on Wiki. It's a good idea to check with people who are active on that Wiki to find out, is there something you don't know about that will affect them? Um, is, there, is there a way that you can get them to support you if there is something that's disruptive that might happen? I think it's always a good idea to find out who would be affected on Wiki um, and off Wiki and talk to them first. Another example is, you won't be able to go into a classroom until you get permission from a teacher. Um, but does that teacher need to get permission from someone else? Does that teacher need to make plans in advance about how they will change um, their schedule during the week to cover all their work? It's just important to be involving everyone who could be affected by your pilot. So exercise two. For the smallest problem you wrote down before, write a solution to that problem. 
Um, and under the solution, you should list three assumptions about the project and why you think those assumptions are true. And then list three skills you don't have that you need for this project to succeed. So I know that in the last um, round of the, um, the exercises, I worked with the idea of um, QR codes. In this one, I'm going to present a different project that I saw. And this was um, creating did you know posters and posting them in places where lots of people would see them. Um, so did you know posters? If you're not familiar, when there are new articles on Wiki, there's a did you know page that gets created. Um, and those pages get featured on the front page of Wikis and have a lot of information um, you know, about the subject. So this proposal to create posters or did you know posters, sharing facts from Wikipedia and putting them up in lots of places. Um, to me, that sounds like a small idea, a small enough idea to get started with. Um, so that's why I'm gonna move on to assumptions about that project. And again, a uh, crew that's here on the, the video, it would be awesome if you would work with me to, I guess, think of one assumption each about the project and why you think that assumption is true. Um, and then one skill that you don't have that you think would be needed for this project to succeed. Um, I'm gonna go first, then I hope someone will jump in after me. So for the posters, um, I assume that there's a place that I can post posters, that I can stick them to walls that people will see them. I assume that the posters will get to stay up. Does anyone else? I, I think that assumption is true because I've seen posters around um, in my neighborhood and in the places that I go in my community. Does anyone have other assumptions they'd share or things you would assume to um, be true? So I, th I think that if the, the poster contains uh, some interesting pictures and, and also it, it's gonna contain an interesting fact, um, so, so that's something that's going to attract people towards the poster. So you assume that an interesting fact and an interesting photo are going to be necessary yes. for someone to read yes. the poster. Yes. I have a question to follow up on that. How long do you mm -hmm. think someone will stop and read a poster? For how long? Yeah. I, I think 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. Yes. That's a great... Uh, great thing to think about. So if you're creating a poster, um, thinking, yeah, people will stop for 10 to 15 seconds. So you really shouldn't have more information on that poster than someone can digest in 10 to 15 seconds. So I think you're right, just a, a cool fact and a great picture. Um, do you think that seeing that will make you want to know what is Wikipedia? How do I get there? Yes, that's what I assume. Um, so, Lauren, Maria, do either of you have assumptions that you might share about this? I can, I can share assumptions about the idea that I shared before. Okay. Um, so, uh, including QR codes on, on workbooks, mm -hmm. uh, I guess one of the assumptions, the underlying assumption is that teachers appreciate the content of Wikipedia for its quality. Yeah. That, that could be not true. Uh, some, some, teachers, um, some teachers think that uh, we shouldn't use Wikipedia uh, yeah. to teach students. And so, yeah, I think that's an important assumption to test. I think you're right. Um, I'm thinking other, I think I, I may have said earlier with, with the QR codes and textbooks, an assumption is that Wikipedia has um, information that's relevant to students' curriculum, but also um, has information that's written at a skill level or at a reading level that students would understand or in a language that students would understand. Um, so these are really good assumptions to, to think about. Um, 
So any other assumptions about making a poster? I think a good assumption is that I assume that when people see the poster and enjoy the fact that they'll want to read more and come to Wikipedia um, and that they will remember the name Wikipedia next time they're searching for something that they know. Um, and with that assumption, something that I learn is um, how do I make that clear on the poster? Or how do I reinforce the, the, the word Wikipedia so that people recognize it when they search for something um, and know what to do next after seeing the poster? I think that that's, that's a helpful um, idea to get from that assumption. So I'm gonna go on to skills. So what are three skills that you don't have that you would need for this project to succeed? Um, and I'm gonna say, Maria, maybe you can think of skills that would relate to the QR codes and textbooks. And Satip, you and I can think about skills that would relate to creating a poster. Sound good? Yes. All right, I will go first with the poster. I have pretty limited graphic design experience. I count on Maria a lot of times to make things better looking. Or I take presentations created by uh, Sati that are already really good looking. So I would need to find someone who could help me create um, a cool and compelling design for the poster. Uh, OK, I'll, I had that in mind. So I'm going to go with something else now so okay. this oh yes the skill i don't have is uh, is that i don't have appropriate content uh, contacts at my university okay to get the permission to go to go uh, to get this, those posters on the notice boards and other and important places oh that's a great thing to point out so satip says he the skill he doesn't have is he doesn't know who to talk to at his university to get permission to put up posters um and if you're going to that university or you know someone there, I bet that if you ask enough friends, someone will have that skill. So that's, that's a really good one to think about. Um, how are you going to get the thing out in the first place? Let me think of another skill. So this isn't as much a skill, but a resource. I don't have a very good printer, so I couldn't make a lot of posters. Um, so, um, I would look for someone else to print the posters for me. Yes, we can get them printed up uh, from somewhere. Yeah, there might be someone else who can do the printing for me. Um, Maria, do you want to talk about skills that would be needed to do QR codes in student work? Yeah, so um, I, I would say lesson lesson planning uh so uh, okay having basic knowledge of uh, uh pedagogy and lesson planning for for school children that's uh that is a significant skill that people spend years in school and then many more years in the classroom learning so how to teach students and how to make a lesson plan isn't a skill you have exactly uh, I'm thinking of a skill that I don't have that would be challenging for this project. Um, I don't. Let's see. Well, I guess I have all the skills. I can't think of one. Uh, <laughs> so I'll just keep moving on. But um, that's a great, a great thing to think about. Like, do you know how to make a compelling lesson plan? If you don't, look for someone who can help with that. Um, I was going to say, if we were going to go and present this to students at an elementary school or a secondary school, the skill I don't have is um, convincing teachers. I'm not a very persuasive person. Um, so I would need to find someone to work with who could persuade teachers or who has a relationship with a teacher who's willing to try this in their classroom. 
Um, or I would need help to create a persuasive argument for why we should do this and get help refining that. Um, 